Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Sci-Fi Odyssey. Today we're diving into the swirling vortex of mind-bending new wave science fiction, offering up five you need to read. Emerging in the 1960s, new wave sci-fi was the literary equivalent of a rebellious teenager, defying the more conventional hard science fiction and space opera-esque stories that came before it, embracing a more literary approach. The focus shifted from the how and the what to the who and why. Stories began to orbit around characters and societies infused with introspection and style. What does that mean? Well, shit got weird. This was the era of experimental beats and psychedelic rock, and new wave authors were the literary Hendrixes and Dylans. They played with narrative structure, dove into streams of consciousness, and flirted with the boundaries of reality. This wasn't just sci-fi, this was a manifesto in narrative form. New Wave was all about exploring the potential of the mind and the fabric of reality. It questioned authority, shattered societal norms, and dabbled with the taboo. It was a mirror reflecting the inner chaos and societal tumult of the time. These stories didn't just imagine new worlds, they deconstructed ours and rebuilt it in wild new ways. So with the history lesson portion of the video over, let's dive into our first must read if you're looking to have your mind tied up in knots. First up is Dalgren by Samuel R. Delaney. This masterwork was first unleashed upon the world in 1975. It's a tome that has defied easy categorization, daring to disrupt the traditional landscape of science fiction. Dahlgren is a narrative anomaly. It immerses us in the city of Bologna, a once thriving metropolis now cut off from the world after a mysterious cataclysm. Here we meet our protagonist, known only as the Kid, whose journey through this urban labyrinth is as much about piecing together his identity as it is about navigating the city's surreal happenings. In Bologna, reality is a loose concept, and Delaney's prose mirrors this. The narrative dances between starkly real and eerily fantastical, looping back on itself, refusing to adhere to a straight line. It's a novel that resists being pinged down, changing its shape with every read. Published amidst the backdrop of the tumultuous 70s, Dahlgren reflects the era's experimental and questioning spirit. Delaney gives us a rich tapestry of characters, artists, outcasts, revolutionaries, and a city where the day never fully brightens and the night never truly falls, always in perpetual twilight. This book is as much a journey into the heart of an unknowable city as it is an exploration of human consciousness. Its sprawling narrative encompasses themes of identity, sexuality, and society wrapped in a riddle of time and perception. Dahlgren is a profound exploration into what it means to be both an individual and part of something larger than oneself. Our next mind-bending pick is Roadside Picnic, where Earth has been transformed by otherworldly phenomena after a transient visit by extraterrestrial beings. The title Roadside Picnic by the Russian brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, published in 1972, is a metaphor for the extraterrestrial event that leaves behind on Earth zones of wonder and horror, places where the laws of physics are turned on their head. It's as if the aliens popped by for a quick bite to eat on Earth and casually left behind objects of inscrutable purpose and peril, much like the way humans might leave rubbish behind after a picnic. Our guides through this transformed earth are the stalkers, daring individuals who illicitly venture into these quarantined zones to retrieve the alien remnants. The novel's protagonist, Red, is a seasoned stalker, whose forays into the zones are as much about personal obsession as they are about the lucrative black market for these alien artefacts. Published at the height of the Cold War, Roadside Picnic is infused with a profound sense of unease. It explores the human condition in the face of the incomprehensible and the moral dilemmas that arise when facing the unknown. The Strugatsky brothers deliver a narrative that is at once a thrilling sci-fi adventure and a philosophical examination into the impact of the extraordinary on the ordinary, the sacred and the profane. Beyond its thrilling narrative, Roadside Picnic probes the consequences of humanity encountering something beyond its understanding. It's a stark reflection of our own society, 
How do we deal with the remnants of wonders we can hardly fathom? The zones become a metaphor for the internal and the external frontiers we dare to explore. Next, let's delve into the dream altered reality of The Lathe of Heaven, a visionary work by Ursula K. Le Guin that was first published in 1971. The Lathe of Heaven stands as a beacon within the genre, blurring the lines between the consciousness and the subconsciousness. At the heart of the narrative is George, a man whose dreams possess the unsettling ability to alter reality, the effective dream that reshapes the world. When he awakens, the world changes with him, and only he retains the memory of how it was before. Imagine carrying the weight of multiple realities in your mind, each as real as the last. George's turbulent journey is entwined with that of his psychiatrist, Dr. William Haber, a man whose ambition is as vast as his ethical compass is questionable. Haber sees George's dreams as an opportunity to play God, to reshape the world according to his own design. But as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility, and in the lathe of heaven, the consequences of wielding such power are unpredictable and far-reaching. Published at the dawn of an era marked by environmental concerns and complex societal movements, the lathe of heaven speaks to the anxieties of the time. Le Guin's narrative is more than just a sci-fi tale, it's a philosophical exploration of power, responsibility and the fine line between utopia and dystopia. It scrutinises the implications of playing God with the building blocks of reality and asks a haunting question. What happens when one person's vision is imposed on the whole world. Le Guin invites readers to ponder deep ethical dilemmas. The rights of the individual versus the perceived good of humanity. The use and abuse of power and the significance of dreaming as a form of escape, creation or destruction. The Lathe of Heaven challenges us to question the nature of reality and the potential havoc that meddling with it could wreak. Up next, the hallucinatory reality of a scanner darkly by new wave master Philip K. Dick a novel that unflinchingly navigates the maze of drug addiction and surveillance. Released to the public in 1977, this book has since become a touchstone of sci-fi praised for its prescient commentary on society. In this narrative kaleidoscope, we meet Bob Arctor, an undercover narcotics agent living in the future Orange County, California. His mission is to infiltrate the drug culture dominated by Substance D, a drug that causes a split in the individual's personality, a disunion between the mind and the body. PKD conjures a world where reality is as mutable as the effects of the drug itself. Arcta dons a scramble suit to conceal his identity, becoming a faceless enforcer of a law he's breaking, chasing a shadow that might just be his own. The scramble suit is emblematic of the fragmented identities within the book and serves as a metaphor for the elusive quest for truth. Dick's genius lies in the way he externalises inner turmoil. As Arcta's identity disintegrates under the weight of Substance D, the line between observer and observed, the hunter and hunted, becomes increasingly blurred. This erosion of the self is mirrored in the book's narrative structure, which fragments and resembles itself like a psyche under the strain of addiction. Published in the wake of the 60s drug culture and the rise of surveillance technology, A Scanner Darkly is as relevant today as it was in the 70s. It's a profound exploration of addiction, paranoia and the loss of identity. It asks, in a world where reality can be manipulated, what does it mean to be real? What does it mean to be seen? This is not a book for the faint of heart. It's a journey into the inner depths of the human mind, exploring the harrowing consequences of substance abuse and the nature of reality. PKD doesn't just write about paranoia, he makes you feel it and makes you live it. The final mind-bending pick on this list is Behold the Man by Michael Moorcock, a novel that ventures into the realms of deep time and personal identity. Originally published in 1966, this novella presents a provocative twist on time travel and religious narrative. In this tale, Moorcock introduces us to Carl, a man on a quest for meaning in his own life who finds himself transported to the first century. Here he is confronted with the realities of time steeped in myth and expectation, a time that challenges his preconceptions about history and religion. Carl's journey is a quest for identity and understanding, 
as he navigates this ancient world, he encounters figures of biblical lore, ultimately leading to a personal crisis and a revelation that resonates with the book's title. Moorcock deftly explores the themes of messianism and the psychology of the individual amidst historical and religious landscapes. Behold, the man delves into the paradoxes of time travel and the question of what it means to fulfil a role larger than oneself. It's a novel that challenges readers to ponder the foundations of their belief systems and the nature of destiny. Moorcock's storytelling compels us to confront the essence of myth and the constructs of faith. Published in the swinging 60s, a period brimming with cultural revolutions and the questioning of traditional values, Behold the Man fits right into the era's exploratory ethos. Moorcock's narrative is at once a mirror to the zeitgeist and the timeless inquiry into the human condition. Behold the Man invites us to witness a journey that defies the constraints of time and takes us into the depths of the human soul. For those eager to explore the intricacies of time, identity and belief, this novella offers a compelling and thought-provoking voyage. Before we leave the swirling mind frack of New Wave, here's a few honourable mentions. First, Vallis by Philip K. Dick. This semi-autobiographical novel takes us on a trip through the Gnostic visions of its protagonist, exploring the nature of reality, God and madness. If there's a boundary to this genre, Dick doesn't just push it, he shatters it. But let's be honest, anything by Dick hits the new wave spot. Did I just really say that? Next, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. It's not just a book, it's a time travel experience about the absurdity of war. With its non-linear narrative, Vonnegut's anti-war outcry is a poignant and darkly humorous journey through the life of Billy Pilgrim. And Stand on Zanzibar by John Brunner. This Hugo Award winner is a tour de force of future shock fiction. It dives into an overpopulated world, exploring themes of social unrest, eugenics and corporate power. Brunner's foresight is as unsettling as it is compelling. New Wave sci-fi is all about bold ideas and stylistic innovation. These books are a gateway to alternate realities that will bend your mind and stretch your imagination. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this selection and what other mind-bending New Wave picks you'd add. So leave your comments below. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you're craving an extraordinary journey through realms unexplored, consider delving into universes directly out of my brain by checking out my sci-fi novels Black Milk and Delphine Descends. You can find more details in the description. Thanks for your support.